Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today's video topic is going to be about stained glass uh, polishing wax and the reason why I prefer not to use the polishing waxes. Um, and I'm going to go over the difference uh, between what I use and, and that technique. Um, I'm also going to show you the reason why I don't use the polishing wax um, because it gets a white residue buildup on my solder lines. I know that other people struggle with this. I've seen people ask this question on the Facebook forums and stuff like that. So I thought that this might help people out um, and show you that you really do not need to use those waxes. Um, yes, they're beautiful for the glass. Yes, they make the glass shine, but so does white vinegar. And you're not gonna have that, that nasty wax buildup. So I'm going to do a video today where I um, show you how I clean and patina and polish my pieces. I'm also going to do another video on how to clean up your solder lines if that wax buildup does occur or sometimes you get oxidization buildup on your solder lines and I'm just going to show you how to take that off and make your pieces look shiny and new. So I also want to say to please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also check us out on Facebook um, and check out my website, reneestainglassworks.com. I'm working on uploading some free patterns onto there. Right now I have a free 3D hummingbird pattern on there that is a free download. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so some things you're going to need for this uh, are white vinegar, patina, any patina that you are using. Uh, if you're not using patina, then just the white vinegar, a steel wool, uh, a polishing cloth, Q-tips, a paper towel, a small brush, or a toothbrush works great. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is... Um, this is going to be the video where I uh, clean and patina and polish, so you can kind of just see my little routine. So I use the uh, the CJ's uh, Flux Remover. If you don't have that, Dawn dish soap works good. And I give it a pretty good dousing. Sometimes I've, I've already washed this uh, a couple times, but sometimes I wash it, you know, three times, four times, whatever it takes to get that... Uh, that flux off of there. That is nasty stuff. I use gel flux and it really likes to stay on there. So after you clean it, you're going to go ahead and rinse it and then give it a, a good rinse with some uh, white vinegar. This also helps to get the flux off. And then we're going to rinse both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to dry it off and I go over it with a uh, paper towel that I have uh, wet with white vinegar and I'm just wiping it all off with that. This helps to make sure all the flux is off of there. And I'm going to do both sides. So I'm just drying off my piece right now. Kind of going to get everything ready to patina. I'm going to prep the solder here by uh, using steel wool. You want to make sure that you use steel wool before you apply your patina. Uh, it roughs up the solder so that it allows your patina to bind to something. Um, otherwise, it doesn't go on as easy. I find that using steel wool definitely helps it go on much easier. Also, uh, using a little toothbrush to apply your patina also helps to force it into the solder. It, it works really well. It's better than a rag. And I get my steel wool uh, wherever I can on sale. Um, I've gotten at Harbor Freight, uh, Walmart. I will put a, a link in the description box below uh, to where you can uh, get some of that. So yeah, I'm going to do both sides, front and back, with the steel wool. 
wherever I have soldered, I'm going to uh, buff it with the steel wool and get it ready for the patina. Okay, so I'm gonna get my rag, my uh, paper towel wet with more white vinegar. I'm going to wipe off the excess uh, steel wool residue that's left behind. I want my piece to be nice and clean and ready for my patina. I don't want it to be dirty in any way. A clean piece usually equals a nice clean patina. And so I use the Novacan, and I'll put a link in the description below for the Novacan patina. You can get it at any stained glass supply store, but I'll put a link to where I get it. And I'm using the toothbrush to apply. Works really good. Usually only need to do one coat. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to get ready to polish and in my little spritz bottle is the white vinegar and I'm just spraying my piece and polishing. I usually do let my um, my patina sit for a minute before I polish and buff because I don't want too much to come off. I want to keep it as dark as possible. So I kind of let it sit for a minute and then I go ahead and uh, clean it off and polish. So there we go. The glass looks beautiful. The solder lines look beautiful. And this is why I use the white vinegar because it will look like this. It will continue to look like this. It won't get that residue build up like it does with that glass polish. And I know how much so many of you love using it. I know because I loved it too. Okay, so you can see here the residue buildup on the solder lines. Looks awful. So that's what I'm going to focus on, getting that off. And it's on the other side as well. And this piece here I just wanted to show you uh, is just been polished with the white vinegar. Uh, there's absolutely no buildup. The lines look nice and clean. And I haven't touched this piece in a couple months. So I'm going to show you guys how to keep your pieces looking just like that. And I know the camera angle isn't that great, but right now I'm just spritzing it with some white vinegar and I'm going to polish it first. I'm going to try to clean off that uh, residue buildup as much as I can. Okay, so now we're going to go over it with some of the black patina. I'm going to use a Q-tip only because I have some 
uh, copper patina on there that I don't want to get uh, any of the black patina flecked onto it. So I'm going to try to be careful and try to do this at an angle that everybody can see. And sometimes this is all it takes, you know, it's not, you know, as stubborn as it is other times. So this side, I think it might, all it might need is just the black patina like this. So you just keep applying it until you get the coverage that you want. You might want to let it, you know, sit for a minute in between and see how it looks. But yeah, this is this is all you really need to do um, when it's not too bad. Like I said, there are sometimes when it's really stubborn and you can't get it off as easily and cover it up. So that takes a little bit more work. But I'll also leave um, a link in the description for uh, Black Patina and where you can purchase that. I'm just going over it with a paper towel here just to dry it off a little. Cleaning it off. And as you can see, I'm not happy with it yet, so I'm just going to keep repeating this process until I get it the way that I want it and until I'm happy. There, that looks better. Nice and clean. Okay, so this is the other side, and I'm sorry about the camera angle. I'm going to get better at this, I promise. So I'm just cleaning this side now, starting with the vinegar, and going to go through the same process. Okay, since this one's being stubborn, I'm going to go ahead and use a steel wool to buff out some of that oxidization and that wax buildup. And this will help to give, you know, to give the patina something to bind to when I reapply it. And I'm just cleaning that off. You want to make sure you get all of that steel wool residue off of there. I'm going to spritz, you know, spritz it with vinegar and just make sure that it's nice and clean. You don't want to get that mixed up with your patina. Yep, I'm polishing that off. It's looking really good. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply the patina and see how that binds to it and how that looks. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty stubborn. Like, there's spots that are pretty stubborn on this one. This one is definitely going to take a little while. And I'm just going to keep repeating this process until I get it the way that I want. And when it's stubborn like that, this is where the toothbrush comes in handy. Because that's that really helps to get that patina into the solder lines. It works really good, but I don't want to splatter it onto, you can see I have some copper patina there. I don't want to splatter it onto that. I'm trying to be very careful. That's the one thing with using, with using a toothbrush is that it gets all over the place. 
So I'm pretty happy with that and I'm going to go ahead and give it one final clean and polish with the microfiber cloth and uh, then we'll do an up close shot here. So there you have it, nice and new again. That's how you do it. That's how you use the white vinegar to polish your pieces and that's how you clean up that residue and make it look like new again. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that this video was helpful. Um, I hope that it helps people to realize that you don't have to be dependent on those stained glass waxes. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments section. Um, also, if you have any other suggestions or tips or any way that you, know, you guys are polishing your pieces that is, works better than this, um, or you have a different technique, uh, please share that uh, with everybody. Uh, I, would, I would love to hear from everybody. Everybody's input is so important to me. So again, thank you all so much, and I hope you all have a great day.